Hi guys. Um, so the returns. Um, I updated the sheet here um, for this year, a couple of days ago, 27th of November, 23. Um, um, and yeah, this year stocks did well. And like last year, 2022, stocks did poorly. This year, uh, gold did well. And like last year, it did nothing. Cash is uh, still up at 5% interest. Um, that was the big shocker of last year, 2022. Before, we're always used to 0% interest uh, since 2008. Um, but it went back to 4% last year. And we're almost at the end of the year. It's still at 4 5%. That cash uh, now has a, an actual return, unlike before. And um, I also calculate always the PP world, uh, permanent portfolio world, the return is good. Uh, this is um, uh, an, a concept from Harry Brown, these kind of passive portfolios, you have stocks, bonds typically, but in case of Harry Brown, it's stocks, gold, huh? but he also has a big bond and cash allocation. I, I actually removed the bonds uh, allocation, I just left stocks. Uh, gold and cash. Huh? Uh, I think that makes more sense. I think bonds, um, I've made the case years ago, should be cut out because it's likely going to be a very bad investment. And 25% uh, cash fiat is enough. You need hard assets for the most part. And uh, therefore, 50% stocks and 25% gold makes lots of sense to me. Uh, this portfolio has a 12% return in 23. Unlike last year, which was a very bad year, it has a loss on 8%, even though uh, there were no bonds in it, it still had a loss of 8% because of the stocks that went down quite a lot uh, and gold did not really make up for that loss. But the cash uh, reduced the losses. Eh? So the 25% cash uh, does uh, make sense, I think, for a passive portfolio. But um, I'm not doing that because um, as an active investor, you can make more money than just uh, with passive investing. If you buy things that are undervalued, sell things that are overvalued, you will make likely more than a passive portfolio that always invested for 50% in stocks and 25% in gold. Um, but what, what's most important for me, these uh, very long-term returns so since 1928, uh, we are going back here. Uh, it's very long history uh, and, and, and it's great to see where we are in the cycle. Huh? Um, you see stocks performed well here in the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, but then in the 70s performed poorly, that's the blue line. Whereas gold performed poorly in the 40s, 50s, 60s, but performed very well then in the 70s. Gold performed very poorly in the 80s, well actually this is the uh, return of the last 10 years always. Huh? Um, uh, so actually in the 70s, it was a good return, but also in the 80s here, up until the middle of the 80s, the average return of gold after deducting 5% inflation was positive. Huh? Even until the end of the 80s, it was positive. Huh? Positive return after inflation. Huh? Uh, it's only in the 90s where the last 10 years was a disaster eh? because of the poor performance of gold in the 80s starts to count eh? if you look at the last 10 years eh? then it's only in the 90s that the last 10 years was a poor return so this is always lagging a bit hmm? but that's the idea is here that um what matters is the last uh, 10 years your returns eh? uh for your return for your portfolio huh? and so the best time to have been in the market in gold was in 1980 because the last 10 years you had 25 percent return after inflation huh? whereas in stocks it was in 1960 that was the best time to have been in stocks for the last 10 years a 15 percent return the same in 1990 it was a 13 percent return after inflation and recently, 2021, 
we were at 7% return in the past 10 years for stocks. But I've always used a cycle. Uh, what's so beautiful about this is that you can clearly see the inverse correlation between stocks returns and gold returns. Stocks, when stocks do poorly the last 10 years, gold has done well the last 10 years. If stocks do well the last 10 years, gold does poorly the last 10 years. Huh? Again here in uh, 2010, just after the financial crisis of 2008, stocks had done very, very badly the last 10 years, huh? whereas gold had done very well the last 10 years. Now, gold has done poorly the last 10 years, whereas stocks have done okay the last 10 years, but it's a bit average actually. Stocks actually both are close to zero. Huh? Gold the last 10 years has done as of today 0%. And, well, we can see the exact number here. Uh, after inflation, 1% gold the last 10 years. After inflation, stocks only 3%. Huh? So the question is, where do we go next? Huh? And for that, I think the pattern is quite clear. I mean, nothing is certain. But if you look at the probability, stocks did well here, poorly here. Well here, poorly here. Well here, but not very well. It should go higher, right? If the cycle continues, it should go higher. Stocks should do considerably better over the next five years, ten years. And gold, well, they poorly well, did very good. Poorly, very good. Poorly, though not that poorly, huh? Actually, it's at zero. Didn't do very poorly, actually. It still kept up with inflations of today. But it can get a lot worse. If you look at this period and this period, you can lose 10% per year here after inflation. Huh? In 1990s, in 2000s, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, uh, all of them were minus 5, minus 10%. Huh? And we're at 0%. We, we, we hit minus 5%, but we're back at zero. So gold did relatively well the past 10 years. Not that it's just neutral the last 10 years, but it can get a lot worse. So. From this pattern, it looks like actually this place to be is still stocks and not gold and therefore also not commodities. Gold and commodities are very correlated. And that's also my bias in my portfolio still today. With the exception of uranium, I have an investment in uranium that's done very well the past half year. <clears throat> but I think uh, you have to look for the exceptions in commodities that may do well. Because I think from this, uh, it looks more most likely that actually the time for commodities has not started yet. It's too early, huh? though uh, it's not sure. Huh? Like a small exposure uh, in case this is pattern is wrong. Huh? It's justified always, but uh, uh, even a, a half exposure or a, uh, certainly not a majority exposure seems justified, huh? except when you are a really expert in the field, that, then that does not count. If you're an expert in investing in commodities, of course, you can outbeat the market average returns and, and still have good returns. Huh? But if you're just going to be index investing, huh? then that's not going to happen eh? and you're going to be dependent on the overall performance of the industry. So, um, yeah, that was it. Um, not so much else to report here. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Wishing you a good day.